one of the things that we've been doing at NASA is to provide some information through imagery, which looks at the two issues that Dr. Pogodayev men has mentioned um, on what, both climate change as well as the development issues that have happened. Um, we, because we have many Earth viewing satellites, we we are able to provide imagery that shows changes in the environment, such as perhaps early ice melt of some of the rivers or lakes, or uh, changing vegetation patterns, or in terms of development, as you have um, some of the oil and gas fields up in western Russia, for example, Yamal, you have crisscrossing of the various pastures and migration routes by pipelines, by roads, uh, airports, and of course oil, spilled oil, which has very much interfered with the ability of the herds to move north to their summer pastures. Uh, during this project, uh, ELAT project, which was related to uh, rain day husbandry and vulnerability to climate change and uh, land use change, uh, we were able to, uh, to gather scientists and indigenous reindeer herders, uh, NGOs and authorities together and uh, uh, share with information and we try to verify the, the both information, both scientific and traditional uh, knowledge and um, it, it gave uh, very good results I think and we had very good cooperation and we got some, some, some kind of new knowledge about the new understanding about the, all these processes that we have today. But at the same time, I think very important in this case is that both scientific knowledge and traditional knowledge should be as a equal partners. It not should be like it shouldn't be like one complement complement other. Uh, but when you have uh, really co-production of knowledge, then I think you would be succeeded. For us, what in the beginning was very important to develop. Uh, uh, ethical guidelines, uh, how we work in the local communities when we work with uh, information, with data. and So we developed uh, the standards and we trying to follow that and this was really respect each other and real partnership. The addition of, addition of indigenous knowledge to what we can view in our imagery and our data enriches the picture so much and informs. And these kinds of partnerships, it seems to me, should be encouraged throughout uh, IPCC, throughout the different countries, to take advantage of, to, to work in partnership with in our indigenous colleagues, because they add information that simply wasn't there um, and can, as I said, enrich the satellite data or other type of scientific data and fill out a much more thorough and complete picture. We established few uh, resource information centers in the reindeer herding regions and it means that these reindeer herding regions they now participating in the kind of big network. Uh, this is really important network of uh, uh, contacts in reindeer herding communities and we work together now and and uh, they produce also knowledge and projects and I think it, the impact of this project was really worldwide and now we have initi initiatives from different small communities and uh, we are working together and it was cooperation not only between scientists and, and reindeer herders but also between different indigenous peoples. We see that uh, there is a need for uh, capacity building in indigenous uh, communities and there is a need to work with youth with indigenous youth uh, that can they, that they can participate in knowledge production and there is need to train new leaders from indigenous communities reindeer herders will adapt to climate change if they will have a right to use their and develop their own knowledge and if this knowledge will be respected and included to the uh, local, regional, national and uh, global plans or, and regulations, frameworks. So, and also if they will have a 
possibility to develop their own business by themselves. Uh, so then I think if they will uh, rely on, on themselves, they can manage to find adaptive strategies and they will be able to adapt to this, these changes.